The U.S. Navy is developing the Standard Missile 3, SM-3, to provide a sea-based theater-wide defense against tactical ballistic missiles. This capability will be a vital element of our defensive strategy in theaters abroad. SM-3 builds on the Standard Missile 2 Block 4, which recently completed a successful production qualification flight test at White Sands Missile Range. The Navy team embraces a build a little, test a little philosophy to reduce risk incrementally. The first flight round, FTR-0, will fly through third stage separation and gather valuable environmental data. Prior to flight testing, the missile must undergo an extensive ground test program to ensure that its flight will be successful. In preparation for FTR-0, a live battery test was successfully conducted recently at the Raytheon facility in Tucson, Arizona. It tested the entire flight sequence of the missile on the ground with flight representative hardware, flight software, and internal batteries. All elements of the flight are simulated, including the initial interface with the launcher, followed by booster flyout. Approximately eight seconds after launch, the booster separation is simulated via actual activation of the Marmon clamp. At this point, the control surfaces are activated. After approximately 60 seconds, explosive bolts separate the third stage and the cabling between the stages is removed. Telemetry data analyzed afterward determined that all test objectives were met. As part of additional preparations for flight, an inert operational missile, IOM, was sent to the Combat System Engineering Development Site in Moorestown, New Jersey. This test demonstrated the integrity of the Aegis Weapons System to Missile Interface from pre-launch initialization through simulated third stage separation for this flight scenario and through simulated handover to the kinetic warhead for the future FTR mission scenarios. As part of the electromagnetic vulnerability testing of SM-3, an IOM was exposed to anticipated emissions from the launching ship. The objective of the test was to evaluate the ability to survive and operate in the ship's strong electromagnetic field. The tests were successfully completed ahead of schedule with no electromagnetic upsets observed. The final phase of EMV testing consists of exposing the missile to actual spy radar emissions at Lockheed Martin's production test center in Moorestown, New Jersey. The missile was suspended vertically in front of the SPY 1D array and exposed to radiation on all sides by being rotated. The missile test height was varied to provide illumination of all the critical missile elements. Hardware in the loop testing is done at the Raytheon Tucson facility to support pre-flight verification. Missile hardware is tested in a highly realistic environment where target and missile dynamics can be simulated. Raytheon and Navy personnel, using IOM hardware, recently completed the development and proofing of the assembly and test processes to be used on the FTR-0 at the White Sands Missile Range facility. The next flight on the path to intercept is FTR-1, which will demonstrate two-pulse third-stage rocket motor, TISRAM, operation, nose cone ejection, and KW separation. Several FTR-1 objectives have been completed. The TISRAM, which provides third stage thrust and control, is being developed at Thiokol's Elkton facility. In the latest test, the motor's first pulse was fired, followed by a five second delay. Then, the final pulse was fired. The two pulse motor design is critical to the SM3 performance. The third stage attitude control system a hybrid warm gas, cold gas design executes key maneuvers and maintains the orientation of the third stage during its entire flyout. A nose cone protects the kinetic warhead throughout most of the flight. Prior to ejecting the kinetic warhead, the nose cone must safely be ejected away from the missile. In addition, the kinetic warhead must be able to survive the shock environments resulting from the ejection events. This testing was performed at the Boeing facility in Canoga Park, California. The first kinetic warhead flight unit is undergoing final mission sell-off testing at the Raytheon Tucson facility. A series of functional and performance tests are being conducted. Following sell-off, the kinetic warhead will be delivered for integration with the remaining SM-3 elements. Further along the path to intercept is FTR-2. Objectives include demonstrating solid divert and attitude control system, SDEX, divert maneuvers. 
Successful SDAX hot gas valve tests have demonstrated switching performance, thrust, and valve structural margins. In June, Firecall also successfully tested a flight weight gas generator with improved flame spreading features and pulse grain barriers. FTR Zero is ready for buildup on live rocket motors and testing at White Sands Missile Range. The missile will then be launched from the USS Shiloh at the Pacific Missile Range facility. The successful flight of FTR Zero will be the culmination of a tremendous effort by the contractor government team and a major accomplishment in the development of the SM-3 missile on the path to a critical sea-based theater-wide defense against tactical ballistic missiles.